Hi, and welcome to Enabled. In this video, I'm gonna walk through a few different joysticks that I used inside of this PS4 controller that I built for my quadriplegic nephew. I'm gonna talk about different types of joysticks, both click type and analog, so that you'll have a better understanding of the options out there and what to look for if you were to build something like this. There are a lot of joystick types out there and I don't have nearly all of them but I will I did pick out four different kinds that I have on hand that are uh, significantly different I mean different enough to to discuss now again these similar to the buttons they all work basically the same way pretty much any joystick that you choose is going to work with the controller that you build. I wouldn't worry about it too much. You can't really go wrong if you buy a joystick. It, it will work. Um, with the exception of the sand wall. So this is a sand wall joystick and these are a little bit more expensive than some of the other joysticks. Uh, it's, it's considered a name brand. And I will say that I do like the feel of it. I, I like this joystick. However, the reason that I recommend staying away from this one is because the connector on the Sanwa joystick, uh, they've conveniently combined it into one connector where you just plug a cable into it and then you run that cable to um, typically a, an arcade connection. We don't have this capability here. We actually need individual wires coming out of it. Now I did get this to work. Um, I took the connector that was provided, I think it was provided with the joystick, and I just cut the other end off of it and I identified which wire went where and then I wired it into my board. That's significantly more work. Um, I don't recommend it, so I would steer clear from from the Sanwa joysticks, which is unfortunate because it is a nice joystick. Uh, one that's very similar to the Sanwa and quite a bit cheaper is a Zippy joystick. Uh, these, of course, were made in China, which is why they're so much cheaper, but they do have a, a similar feel. Again, a lot of it's user preference on just if you like the feel of the joystick going from one position to the other. Um, and then this guy, these are the same, these momentary switches here are the same type that are in the buttons that we just reviewed earlier. So again, it's, it's a lot of the same concept. It's just how they package it different. One of the big things that are different between the joysticks are these features right here. So in most of the joysticks, there are different features to change the configuration of the joystick. In arcade games, there the joysticks can be configured for different games. And what I mean by that is you can configure these joysticks so they only operate on up, down, left, and right. Or you can change it around so in in this example, this green plate can be rotated. I believe it's rotated or we go into this hole. This is actually more one of the more complicated ones. I'm not 100% sure how it works, but it can be changed so that you get the diagonal. So you have up, down, left, and right, but you can also go up and right, up and left, and so on and so forth. So you have the full range. Now the joysticks such as these, the zippy and the, the sand wall, they, they do come with ball tops, so you know here's a black ball top and they just thread on the top. Uh, you can also get them with bat tops, so it's more of a oval flavor. Same thing, they just thread on the top. And of course you can get these in a bunch of different colors. Uh, some of them come with LED lights in them if you really want to get super fancy. And when you purchase these you can um, choose what color that you want most generally and uh, that comes with the joystick. Now uh, this guy 
is a Suzo Hap competition style joystick. And again, we got the uh, pretty much the same type of momentary switch. And this, I don't think this one you can change the configuration, which it doesn't really matter because in our case we want the diagonal uh, capability. And so, you know, the, it, it'll work just fine. Now these guys, as far as I know, you can't replace the tops. So you, I think you can get them in bat top or round top. I'm, I'm not 100% sure on that. Um, but you can't just unscrew them like you can these. You can get different colored shafts though. So I have a, a yellow one here and you can get these in a bunch of different colors. Uh, you just take this out and put a new one in. I and mean, that's pretty easy. There's just a, uh, there's a C-clip down here that you pop out and that'll allow the joystick shaft to come out. And you put the new one in and squeeze the new C-clip C -clip on. Uh, over here, we have an Ultimark E-stick. And this one does have a mechanism for changing uh, diagonal or you know up, down, left, right. You just twist this plate around and uh, it's, it's configured right now so you, you can't go diagonal. And the way that works is you're squeezing against the momentary switch and because this is square, if I push this shaft diagonally, it can't push both of these momentary switches at the same time. Now if I twist this plate all the way around then that changes my square position. So now if I go diagonally it can, the shaft is pushing the momentary switch on this guy and this guy up here so that you're pushing them both at the same time and then that's what causes things uh, whatever game you're playing to go diagonal. And then of course you still have the up, down, left, right function. And all the joysticks work that way. It's just a matter of whatever mechanism they use to prevent the shaft, the joystick shaft from traveling uh, to the diagonal position. Uh, so one of the differences between these are the way they mount to the panel. Unfortunately, unlike the buttons, the joysticks seem to be all over the place on how they attach the panels. You can see these two, uh, the Sanwa and the Zippy, they have two different size mounting plates and the holes are not the same either. The Suzo Hap is also very different. The plate's much bigger, wider, and they're, the holes aren't going to work the same as these. Now a lot of them do have multiple holes that you can use for mounting and that does help that does help swap from one to the other but you got to be careful to choose the holes that you're using and make sure that the holes on this one that you choose to use are the same or work the same as the holes on this one that you choose to use and that's a little bit frustrating because you can't easily swap between just for example this zippy joystick to the suzo hap joystick if you do that, you're going to have to do something, add holes or something to accommodate that. Uh, the Ultimark E-Stick is completely different altogether. It doesn't have a flange plate like the other joysticks. It has a threaded connection, and this works very similar to the buttons that we looked at earlier. Um, this bottom plate comes off. It just twists and pops off, and you drill a hole down through your plate and you drop the joystick in, you tighten your nut down and then you put this plate back into place. Oh, it helps if you do it the right direction. And there you go. And then that's how that joystick works. Now, similar to the buttons, these all have different feels and it's just a user preference on which one you like. Uh, bat tops versus ball tops, that's user preference. 
Um, the Ultra Stick has a stiffer resistance, so it, it takes more force to push the joystick forward and back. Um, I don't I don't really like this joystick. Not uh, it's a good joystick. There's really nothing wrong with it. I just don't like the feel of it. It's too stiff for what um, we're trying to do here. I think it works better to have something a little bit looser that flows. The joystick travel uh, is also something to look for. So some of the joystick shafts move farther in each direction than others. And uh, of course, depth is also something. So the Suzo Hap, whatever box that you put this in, you gotta make sure that it's deep enough to accommodate whatever joystick that you're using. Um, obviously the, the Suzo Hap is much thicker than the zippy for example so those are those are just some things to keep in mind um, again you can't really go wrong with the joystick they all are, are going to work uh, there's just a few things that you got to keep in mind whenever you choose these things um, again a recommendation if you don't really know which one to go with uh, maybe go with the cheapest or go to an arcade and just play with some and see if you can tell a difference I bought the majority of the joysticks I have from a company called Retroactive Arcade and they are based in Canada and the reason I bought from them is because they created videos very similar to this only they had way more joysticks and buttons and they went through one by one and described the differences and the pros and cons of each one and they also shared the pricing. And that was really helpful to me going through this, uh, helped me select the joysticks that I wanted. So I thought that I would support them by buying from them. So that's one option, but of course you can get these from a lot of different places online. Hopefully you found something inside of this video helpful. If you did, uh, please like and subscribe to help support the channel. Also, check out some of my other videos where I show you step-by-step -step on how I built this controller and check out future videos where I'm going to get rid of this design and move to a more modular design. Thanks for watching.